and Pastor Bill about it, you saw that there's a question on there that says, do you have a question specifically for Pastor Bill or me or Pastor Jonathan? Right. We are happy to answer any questions you have, too. So obviously I will pass that on to whoever needs to answer a question for you. But um, I will be looking at those and kind of seeing who you are thinking about. And then we're going to give you the green light to kind of ask someone to be your mentor. So um, I need to have a little follow-up with you. I had hoped to have a follow-up with you today, but since you're kind of all filling it out in the room, I can't really instruct you on what to do next yet. But what I think, I'll speak for myself here and tell you that I'll probably reach out this week and give you some guidance on reaching out to those people that are mentors. And if you're not as connected and you don't know people as well, then obviously I'll walk alongside you and help you ask. But um, it would be good to ask in the very near future because of the event we plan to have next month. And then as far as that form, the way that that came up, as I was saying earlier, and PJ was also saying, I have a form for all of the S's. So if you remember the first meeting we had when I talked and PJ wasn't here yet, and we have one for sacrament and for service and for Sabbath, these are all your requirements for confirmation, right? Yay. So there's going to be a form for each one of those things. So for sacrament, there's going to be a short form. You might tell us who you went to visit. You might tell us a little story about your visit. Um, and that'll be really cool. We want to hear what, what's happening when you're out in the world and talking to other people. So that's what that one will be like. Service will be an opportunity for you to kind of list the different ways that you're serving. Um, but some will be shorter than others. But the way that you found that today, that's where they're all going to be. They'll be listed like that. So when we reach a milestone where you have to kind of show us that you've completed it, a new form will be uploaded for that. Yeah. So. I think a lot of those will happen this summer. So while we might not be meeting as as right, we will meet. We will we'll meet same. possibly in August, but probably it'll be well. No, sorry, it'll be Ju July and August will be off, and then we'll meet in September. And then we'll have we have our retreat already set too, and we've got dates for that <clears throat> at the end of September and and uh, that weekend mm -hmm. into, October. into October. So it's first. Yeah, I think Saturday is the first of October, so we'll be Friday in bed, and you'll probably have a game yeah. <laughs> for sure. And there may be some other. Sometimes there are Friday events, but and we, then sometimes people kind of skip out when yeah. they can. So when you if you miss for a game, you might come out the next morning or late that night even. Oh, we're, yeah. we're up for late, sure. so <laughs> yeah. I remember finishing a high school football game and driving to Prescott that same night to oh. make it to a youth retreat. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but we have a lot of fun. It's a it's a Kathy Bowman, if you know her, that does a lot of the service stuff here that hosts it at their house and that. Um, Tawanda's Peninsula, which is that thing that sticks out into the into the water out here to the west. And it's really cool place, kayaks, all kinds of stuff going on there. So anyway, yeah, so, so thank you. Do cool. you have any questions about those forms, though? Now it makes sense. I think a lot of you have done those for school anyway. Yeah. But it's just an easy way for us to kind of track all of the different things that you guys are doing, especially with how busy you guys are. So so if you have questions, stop me, reach out, yeah. force me to hand you materials. I will do it. I'm yeah. sorry that I haven't gotten I thought you'd have it, so I apologize. But yeah. all right, we're making it work. But that's all what right. I'm around for. So we're making it work. I, although I'm leaving now too, so I'm leaving for day, but stop me if you need me for yeah. something. So that is a set date. End the retreat. End of September. That last weekend of September, beginning of October. September 29th, and so it's like Friday to Sunday. Yeah, 30th. It yeah, Sunday. it is Friday to Sunday. Friday, like we go over for like dinner-ish on Friday time, and then come back on Sunday after worship sort of thing. So okay. Is that something you've already got? Um, no. Okay, I just not a concert. Sure I got it. In and and on, that, on that form, too, you made me think of this, but if you... When you say questions for us, it doesn't just have to be about mentors. If there are other questions that you want to put in there that you haven't brought up or something you're like, man, how come we're not talking about this? You know, I remember when I came back from sabbatical, came into the to the Sunday school class, you were responding to questions people had. So if you have questions from this class or other questions of faith, it might be stuff that we'll work in as we continue on and as we finish out or even as we plan the retreat. Right okay. on. Right on. So, yeah. All right. Cool. I guess that's it. You guys cool. can... Uh, I'm gonna, You're going to head out. Yep. Are you oh. done? Oh, good. Okay. You're I am. Here. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 hope great, I hope yeah. you have a great class. Yeah. <laughs> nice Definitely. to see you guys. It's fine. Yeah, likewise. Thank you. Enjoy.
And yeah, Joel, you can uh, eat and run as well, or unless you want to stay and talk about the Holy Spirit. Same as you, Jonathan. Family. Great job. I know Ansel's mom is especially bad. <laughs> she likes it. <laughs> I think they got into it. Did she yeah. listen to like KCMS and stuff like that? In fact, that, that they were able to clap. Uh, uh, sometimes. Yeah. 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 So we want to do, yeah, I, I've talked to Justin. We want to redo <laughs> And I just talked to Jessica before about how she yeah. likes that contemporary sound, yeah. yeah. I think. Yeah. 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 She yeah. may like others too. But to write or make little circle things. Mm -hmm. See, Andrew's on set, but totally up to you. Taylor, are you, uh, you comfortable enough there to listen good? Just, you, you got it. You know. Got it. Perfect. All right. Well, sorry Aiden can't be here, but I'm um, really excited you guys are. And then also, uh, who else are we missing? Emma. Emma's Emma. Yeah. 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 So hello, She knew Emma. she couldn't be here, but... Yeah. Um, yeah. Is so everyone, so that's everyone, man. And then confirmation is going to be refer uh, uh, re end of October. Reformation Sunday, yeah. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, so Jonathan has worked with you on the first article of the Creed, God the Father, I think, mm -hmm. and the second article, yep. God the Son. Um, so I, it's coincidentally, I was working on this with my adult class, and so um, you know. God created you and all things. You know, we got all those questions around evolution and the important, really good questions. But the bottom line is that you're not an accident. What did, the, how did God create big creators? Well, yeah, who created God? That's the perfect question, Taylor. That makes us think, wow, we can't get our heads around. How could anything or anyone exist forever? And we are finite creatures. We we can't we can't answer that. Even the greatest scientists can't really answer that. Or what came before that, and before that, and before that. And that's where, which is a c good clue. It's like, hey, something must be going on here, and there must be more to all this than maybe just what meets the eye. Since we face these limits, I think we should. I yeah. think we should talk to them. Like, hey, where were who created you? Oh, oh. I guess we'll all get a chance to ha ask that question, or it'll just be automatically answered for us when we when we're when we don't see through a mirror dimly. The Apostle Paul says something cool in First uh, Corinthians: "Right now we see through a mirror dimly, but then face to face." You know, right now we got lots of questions, lots of struggles, lots of hmm, how does this work? But when we go to be with the Lord, Taylor, we will know. The answer to that question. So anyway, a lot of things we affirm in creation. Anything? Any questions around that uh, that you want to revisit before? Yeah, we're doing good. Victor, you're good. We talked about it a little bit in the first article too. Mm -hmm. A little bit about yeah, yeah. Your Grant. Can we talk about the whole thing entirely? Mm -hmm. So, let's just say this dust cloud was floating in space. Yes. As God. So, where were, was all the materials collected to make up? Simple. Dark light. Boom. <laughs> we have light. What you're getting at is where it is, I think, a, something that we talk about God creating out of nothing. It's called creation ex nihilo in Latin. And, and uh, I heard 
Genesis, everything was the Spirit of God is moving on the water, so it could or could not be there. But, but um, in other passages in the Old Testament, God brings out of nothing. Which is, again, something we can't imagine, because you'd think God would take the materials and then fashion that, right? Well, oh, but... somehow God made everything out of nothing. And uh, have you heard of cosmic inflation? And I think, if I've got that right, that when the world was created, you know, like we know the universe is expanding, right? I think you guys correct me, you guys are all the... You're in the science, and all, right? <laughs> <laughs> the world is expanding. We can see that, um, study that. But that there was this, something that happened about five, six, maybe it's longer than that now. It was definitely before the COVID thing. But where they, and I couldn't understand it because I can't understand that level of science. But that the universe, when it was created, went, and now it's slowly moving, getting bigger. So that the expansion happened like, you know, really, really quickly, which... Anyway, fascinating. But sciences keep uh, scientists and astronomers, right? Not I would like to see other astronomers, astronomers. <laughs> yeah. still are looking at the space, looking at the sky. Yes. Um, so, haven't we been proved with or evidence that the sun came before the earth? I don't know that. That's a good question. The sun has to come before the earth because. If you don't have uh, the sunlight, you don't, you don't, the earth is at all of a freeze, a freeze, let's say like a freeze ball. Yeah. yeah. Like an ice cream cone. See, these are the questions that we end up having, you know, and they're fun and exciting questions. Yep. Yeah. It could also be something <laughs> where I choose to go with the fact to, well, believe with that to when they talk about first day, second day, third day, yeah, it's more like first million years, second million years, or whatever. Yeah. So, what if it's less? Okay, the Earth was created right in its path where it was. Maybe it was something more like, okay, the Earth was somehow formed somewhere in the middle of space, but came this way. Oh, look, a star. A star goes, <laughs> and gets, ah, hi, Frank, come on. <laughs> and gets caught in the sun's gravitational <laughs> thing and starts to rotate. You know, the one, you know, the one thing that's interesting, and I know this, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit today, but um, it's good to just kind of, put the Holy Spirit in context of the Father, the Creator, and the Son, the Redeemer, and, and the Holy Spirit, um, the Sanctifier, which I'll talk about that in a minute. But these are the questions we have. And yes, Yom in Hebrew could be a time period, a day. The Yom means day, and it could be a time period. Um, and isn't it a miracle, though, that, I mean, that if the earth wasn't just located, I mean, it's just perfectly located. To sustain life, if it was further away, life wouldn't be there. If it's closer, it'd be too hot. It's just like in the perfect spot. And then we just happen to have this little moon that you know circles around the earth that keeps every the tides going and life going. And it's it's just it boggles the mind. Um, I guess they're searching right for a, a planet that might be close, like the same distance to its yeah. sun or something like that. Yeah, sorry, right. go ahead. No, no, I life was just saying, it's the perfect, the smaller the, oh. the atmosphere would float away because it wouldn't have enough gravity. If it was bigger, the atmosphere would be sucked in. Right, <clears> right. If we didn't have Jupiter, we probably would have all kinds of things hitting us all the That's time. That's right, the Jupiter's the Jupiter's, big, uh, Jupiter's uh, like uh, a asteroid yeah, it's collector. Like a, it's like a fullback. <laughs> That's yeah, right. right. Yeah, <laughs> so I mean, if you think about it, it is amazing. Taylor? Life may break free. Life finds a way. <laughs> I, I love my meat so much. It's funny. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, that's first article. You guys have talked about that. Um, and hey, that's let's see. Tough. So the second article, of course, when you work with Pastor Jonathan, what even though everything's been created and good and beautiful and we can be so thankful for all the creation and you're not an accident and I'm not an accident, there is a problem. And that's human sin and brokenness. 
death, all of this. And so that's where we get um, what Jesus did for us. And that we sometimes call that the person of Christ. But he redeemed us. He bought us back from sin and death and the devil. So, again, you, you worked on that. Jesus dying on the cross for us, taking our sin. Any questions before we launch in the Holy Spirit about that? That's a... So it's kind of like you, we've got all these questions about who God is, and God is like coming in and saying, I know you do, but let me show you something. <laughs> this is what you can get. And he takes on flesh and become, and, and he's, that's Jesus. So he's like this word that breaks in to all of our wondering and questions and like, wow, you know, how does this all work? And he says, okay, let me give you something you can actually get your head around. You know, he loves you. You know, this is the way Jesus, God's going to bring about his reign through the forgiveness of sin through the church and through our work to live justly in the world until he comes and makes it all right. So anyway, that's the second article. You've worked at that. Any questions about that? I think, I don't know if I did, Pastor Jonathan. Did we hand out, um, did we hand out a small catechism yet? I don't know. Yes, yeah, we did. Yeah. So probably it people probably have it in their, their folder. folder. Yeah. So in your folder is a small catechism. There might be some in the closet. I don't think there are. Do you want some? That's that's okay. I've got it up you know here. I've got, get it. Some. Oh, okay. I've got it. I've got it up here. Um, All right. So uh, Luther in your small catechism says um, that this second article of the creed. I love this one phrase here, that he has redeemed me a law, right here, let's see if I can, where'd my mouse go, everybody, here it is, he has redeemed me, a lost and condemned being, he has purchased me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with silver and gold, but with his precious blood and innocent suffering and death. And then he's done that, that I might belong to him. That is such a cool, I love that. Uh, phrase, and so that's the second article. All right, so now we're on to the third article. Um, I think yes. Where did I last see it? Okay, I must be doing the presenter view thing. Um, one more. This presenter view thing throws me off. Am I not? Am I up there doing anything? Yeah, it says atonement and salvation. It says the same as your your slide on your oh, screen. Okay, that's all right. We gotta get rid of that. That's, I can't get mine to do presenters, so <laughs> switch computers or something. All right. Well, as long as we can go forward, that's all I care about. There we go. So we got that. We got that. We got that. So um, this it, is the it's word. It's not up there though. Oh, it's not. No. Okay. Hello, Mila. Hello. And I wanted to give it to you. And also, she can't lock the doors in the front. Okay. I have to go call somebody, so I'll go. I'm guessing that's yours. All right. And I'll, I'll get this finger down it. here. Uh, <clears throat> I got one of my episodes. I love that. I wonder why it's doing that. I can get him one up. Let's see. You want to plug it in the bottom again? Yeah, I think I need to do that. Hmm? There. It's working? Okay, yeah. I just won't go to my other program. <laughs> um, all right, so here is, we talked about the Spirit. So we got God the Father, God the Son, and we got the Spirit. But what do we call the Spirit? We call the Spirit the... Spirit? Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy so the Holy name Spirit. Holy Spirit tells you what the Spirit does makes you holy, not like W H O L, <laughs> or like making you whole, or H O L E. <laughs> um, so it doesn't know. make you full of holes. That's where I was going, Grant. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> exactly. So when you think of holy, this is the Hebrew word. It's uh, it's kind of cool looking word. Kadosh is the way it uh, sounds. It says to be holy, set apart, consecrated. Now, let's just get this real. When you think about our culture today, and I just need your help here because I don't know. I don't know what's going on in the world. What makes someone, <coughs> to use a kind of trite word, special? Set apart. What makes somebody special in your in your world, in our world that you live in? Like just the average, who you know, like a celebrity. What makes them, I mean, anyway. So what, what are some things that make you special? There's no wrong answer here. Only right answers. What what makes some what's what sets somebody? What are the things that the way that our culture looks at it that sets someone apart? Makes, being who we know, are. Being what? Being who we are. Okay, being who you are. Okay. Yeah. Looking at like famous people and actors and movie stars like that, they have a lot of money. Okay, so sets, money kind of sets them apart. Like can sports players? Yeah. Professionals. Yeah. yeah. So money can make you special if you're wealthy. Maybe it comes, maybe it comes through sports. Um, that's okay. okay. <laughs> maybe it comes through sports. Now, how did they get their money, though, Anthony? What set them apart? Hard work. Hard work, okay. Talent. Talent, absolutely, Sawyer. Um, so they're really good at what they do, and they work really hard. I always used to get frustrated at some of the teammates that they just were so good they didn't really work that hard but that only takes them so far you know some people just so naturally talented but man then it's the hard workers like somebody that's a pro baseball player i mean wow that's some pretty heavy duty competition um somebody that's a pro basketball player so you know football player whatever uh, whatever sport um soccer um it's uh it's a lot of hard work. So, so ultimately, though, that hard work and their talent, what's another word we might use that that enabled them to be that sets them apart? Like, what in the sports field, you either what? Win or lose. Or lose. If somebody loses all the time, maybe they're just so good, but their team is no good. Yeah. And they get attention. But usually... What sets somebody apart in our culture is you win. Um, let's see, an example. Uh, Phoenix Suns, you're familiar with the NBA team, the Phoenix Suns, a little bit? A lot of them. Victor, you probably are, I'm a basketball player. Did I tell you about my history with the Phoenix Suns? I haven't told you yet. But... So, um, when I was growing up in Phoenix, my mom, well, let me back up before I was even born, my mom was really good at embroidery. And that the time you did all the embroidery with this little like sewing machine where you did everything in my hand, like, you know, like these patches and stuff that you guys have, they're all computer done now, by, um, but she used to do them by hand. And uh, so she started a sports apparel business called Art Craft Embroidery. And um, she did a ton of work for the local sporting goods store. They would buy the uniforms, they would take them to her to embroider or to letter, you know, uh, put names on things. Anyway, the Phoenix Suns franchise was born. And the owner of the Phoenix Suns, Jerry Colangelo, went to the sporting goods guy and said, well, who's, who's your best uniform person? And he said, my mom. Now, she just had a little business. I mean, we had a living room, small little living room, and then there was a hole in the wall, and we pushed the phone through the wall during the day. This was, you know, way back there in the olden days. And so she would answer the phone for business during the day and then she'd push it through and answer for personal stuff. Well, she designed the Phoenix Suns uniforms. That little sunburst on the side, although they've changed it a little bit, it's basically her design and stuff. So I grew up with basketball. Now, there's a ton of famous Phoenix Suns players, but guess what? None of them ever won the championship. Chris Paul now is on the Phoenix Suns. Greatest point guard of all time. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's 
It, well, yeah, sorry. Uh, maybe the greatest, maybe what, John Stockton? Uh, I don't know, you might go. But guess what, John? did John Stockton ever win an NBA championship? I don't think so. You forget about these guys. But, of course, who do we know as the ultimate? Michael Jordan and his five championships or Kobe Bryant or Shaq. You know, if you don't win, you are not holy, set apart in our culture. Our culture loves the winner. Okay, nothing necessarily wrong with that at a certain level. I don't know, Taylor, what do you think? That's all right, I was just pulling you back in there. I know, you're, it's hard. So, um, so that's one thing. And that, so you said money, success, talent. Um, what else sets you apart in our culture? Being weird. <laughs> Being weird. Yes, it's true. Yes, Grant. <laughs> Being able to do simple math. Being able to do simple math. That's no joke. 8 plus 2 equals 10, not 8 plus 1. Yes. 8 plus 2 equals so equals. So my brother, is a, <laughs> my brother is a manufacturing engineer for Honeywell. They make jet engines. And he told me once, he said, Bill, we would take anybody who could do high school algebra and trigonometry. They don't need to go to college. We'll take them right now. So there you go. So again, there's an ability. You're hired. <laughs> there's an ability thing that enables you to be set apart, special, I guess you could say. Um, sometimes ability, but it's not just sports ability. It's intellect, being able to do simple math, um, uh, balance your checkbook, whatever. Don't spend more money than you have. Uh, these are all things that will help. Um, what else? We just scratched the surface. What makes you? <laughs> what makes you special in our culture? How can you get to be like somebody like people look up to you or you know like um, you know <laughs> being kind? Ah, sometimes people who are super super kind and compassionate that win such respect by people that they go, oh man, that is that that person is really. I mean, I don't know, we could think of some examples, like a Martin Luther King Jr. or something. Who, so, so maybe, um, Taylor, in addition to being kind, it's like really fighting for a good cause, maybe. Sticking your neck out, making a sacrifice. That's, that sounds good. Um, oh, man, what else? How do you set yourself apart? Hard work, money, talent, uh, being kind. Um, Winning, uh, knowing how to do simple math. Yes, Grant, here's another. Owning a garage. Owning a garage. Now you have arrived. That. How many of the big companies started in a garage? It's true. It's true. And I thought you were going to say owning a, a cool tractor. Well, sometimes that <laughs> works, but unless you start a museum and it gets really popular, yeah, not likely to work. Yeah, yeah, that's, um, yeah. So sometimes the stuff you have, special house. Oh, what about this one? Who you know? Yeah. Hmm. Have you heard the phrase? It's not what you know; it's who you know. It's not really a positive thing, but sometimes getting a job. Like if Taylor showed up and and uh, you know was interviewing for a job that I wanted, and and you know Taylor's clearly going to be the most gifted and most talented, um, and uh, you know, but I happen to know the, the person, boss. so I know the boss, so I get the job, you know. So sometimes it's who you know. That's that's another way. Hmm. Wonder if we've exhausted them. think so. Let's see. Oh! Sometimes those movie stars, they're not only rich and talented, but maybe they're nice to look at. I don't know. Maybe how you look has something to do with what people think about you. That's, I, unfortunately, this is true in our culture, that that's a big value. 
and then you've got all the industry to sell products to make you feel special and look good. Um, your parents I, can. What's that? Your parents, if you have the famous parents. True. Being the child. You're her family, Mike. That's excellent. That's right. Maybe you've got this really great lineage and your family's all, you know, successful and famous and now you're, you know, you're a Kardashian or something. I don't know. We were the first families to come and establish North America. Yeah, right. Or something like that. Like, I, well, I'm the son of uh, President Whatchanot. So, yeah, that can do it too. Yeah. Yeah. Man, a lot of, that's a big weight. So let's go back and say, okay, so God created us. He redeemed us. Now, how are we going to be made holy? You might start thinking, well, now God did all that. He created us and he redeemed us, but now it's our job. Now we got to get to work. Let's get successful. Let's be holy. Let's be really kind. Let's do all these great things. Let's go to church every Sunday Come to worship every Sunday. Or, and let's read the Bible and let's do all these really great things. Uh, let's work hard in school. Let's work hard in sports and do well. Oh, we didn't talk about instruments, huh? You know, you're really good at playing an, an instrument. So let's do all that. So now you might think, okay, God created, Jesus redeemed. Now it's my job. I got to get to work. But guess what? even more good news because that is not exactly the way it goes let's look at a couple scriptures here anybody comfortable reading today i'm gonna read that one up there on the screen no. it's not so, on the screen yes. be holy says oh for goodness sakes all right what in the world is going on Everything else, we're not even going to put up. This, we're going to get rid of this too. And I don't want to, but I'll have to come back to it. Let's update that and then we'll come right back there when I'm done. Okay, so now we're going to try this one more time. up there now? Does it go? Did it go? No. No. This is, this is quite strange. Alright, let's see. Custom slam shelter and gimming. Nice to meet you, Dr. Strange. You. <laughs> Hold on. I'm gonna fix it. Got it up there now, right? Nope. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Maybe we stop trying. No, we're going to not give up. We will never give up. All right. Well, we just won't run. We'll just advance through the slides without doing the slide. So, anybody able to read that? Well, I am physically unable to You are right physically now. unable? Check again in an hour or two. Okay, after you've had some more Coke. That should be waking you up. Anybody want to go take a go? Oh. All right, please, Victor. I got more, so we'll go him, Ansel next. In him, you also... Wait. Yeah. That's in him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with, with the promise of the Holy Spirit was the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquired possession of it to the praise of his glory. Okay, so now the Holy Spirit shows up. So what are the verbs here that are associated with the Holy Spirit? We got sealed. You've been you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit and then the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it. So the Holy Spirit 
makes us holy by sealing something. What is that? Our belief in him. So when we talk about the Holy Spirit, we think about God the verb. Verbs are what? Action words. Yep. They're not nouns, right? So Well, in between. I in between. Verb is an action. You know, they're, they're being verbs and action verbs and stuff, but this is God the verb. So God, with the Holy Spirit, enables you to believe. Like, you, if you believe in Jesus right now, which I believe you all do, guess what? Actually, you didn't do that. That was God the Holy Spirit creating that faith in you through the word that you've been preached, through the sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper. God, the whole, God's Holy Spirit has sealed that belief in you, has put that in you. Um, and then what part of that is a guarantee that, man, someday... All this brokenness will go away. We will be absolutely cared for and set. All right. So um, let's keep going. How about, Ansel, you do this one? It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves but you. In the things that have been known, have known been announced, have now been announced That's to fine. you through those you preached. The good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Okay, so now, what is the Holy Spirit doing? The Holy Spirit, um, pre you, the news is preached through the Holy Spirit. So when you, if you want to think about what does the Holy Spirit do, the Holy Spirit preaches the word. Yeah. Through maybe a pastor, maybe a friend. Maybe mom or dad. Maybe a fish. I don't know that a fish can preach, but I'm, I don't know. <laughs> Unless you're thinking of the Christian symbol, which does preach. Did, oh, you, oh. did you know where that comes from? No. Oh, well, you want to know this, don't you? Oh, we don't have any pens? Where are all the pens? Give me a few minutes. Find me a pen, pen Grant. All right, so the symbol of fish that you see, sometimes see on uh, cars and stuff like that. Uh -huh. So you take one. <laughs> you know, Grant, you're, you're super to look for that for me. But if you take one part of the curve, and then you do this other curve to make the fish. So there's a legend that Christians, when they were persecuted early on in Christianity, one person would make one part of the line and then if you weren't, if the other person wasn't a Christian, then they were going, oh, that's rude. Um, well, we have, oh, you're giving me the time limit. Yep. <laughs> um, and then the other, but if the other person was a Christian, they would do that. So that was a thing. But anyway, you know what, Grant, we can just, we don't need it. I'll, I'll just tell you. I wasn't going to show it anyway. But it is kind of weird that we don't have it. Oh, look at this. What is that? A sharpie. Or not dry or very nice. No. These are all. That's all right. Just, we'll bail. We'll bail. So, do you guys know what, uh, what do you call it when you have like a word and then the first word, le the letter stands for something? Something for him? An acronym. That's what it is. Um, so, in Greek, the word, the letters for fish. F-I-S. In our language, it's four letters, but in Greek, it's five. And each one stands for God, Son, Savior, um, God, Son, Savior. Um, anyway, each letter stands. So fish is an acronym in Greek. God or G. Right, but in Greek. Oh. So it's called the ichthys. So um, Jesus, God, Son, Savior, and then there's one more. So, in Greek, the word makes an acronym, you know, so, so anyway, so there's your fish, Taylor, you got me off on a tangent here off the fish thing, but anyway, the Holy Spirit preaches, maybe, what else does the Holy Spirit preach to you? I also meant that as a joke. I know you did, I'm just joking with you, too. Um, but you got, you had something there, so, I was, I was you just didn't a, know it. I but. was also a little bit surprised. Yes, uh, <laughs> um, so, 
What about that Bible that you guys are always, you know, that we're always talking about? Well, that preaches. But that Bible is just words without the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit enables us to believe. Um, and my computer now all fell asleep. Hey, why don't you go night night? Why? You'd think I'd never done this before with all these problems. Um, all right, so that's a cool one. Uh, that the Holy Spirit does. So God the verb, it's all about preaching and hearing. That is something that without the Holy Spirit, you would not believe. You wouldn't be sitting here today. Now, let's talk about something that's related to this. Um, a lot of people equate the Holy Spirit with emotion. Have you ever been to any Pentecostal churches? Once... Once, I, get, I believe, I don't know. I was, yeah. was Mike, have you been in a church where everybody's raising their hands? And, yeah. Um, or doing something called speaking in tongues, which is kind of like this angelic language. And we don't know a lot about it, but it appears that some people, when they receive the Holy Spirit, they would speak in this kind of gibberish. And other people who have the gift of interpreting could understand it. And the Apostle Paul in the New Testament has to say, stop doing this in worship. People are going to think you're nuts. <laughs> but he said, if you do do it, if somebody does speak in tongues, there should be somebody else that can understand and interpret it. Otherwise, they should be quiet. But some people have this as a prayer language. But not just that. A lot of people equate the Holy Spirit with feeling good, emotions, you know. Um, and sometimes when the Holy Spirit comes, it does feel good. Like today, I don't know how you experience worship. But there was a couple spots where I was very, it was very emotional to me. Communion was one of those. I mean, that song, actually, I think it talked about being made holy. But um, that song just resonated for, with me, even though it was a new song and I didn't know it well. It, that, that was a really cool emotional moment. But not the rest of the service wasn't necessarily that emotional to me. But does that mean the Holy Spirit wasn't working? Absolutely not. The Holy Spirit, don't equate the Holy Spirit with emotion. Yes, the power, the working of the Spirit sometimes has emotion, gives us certain feelings. But the Holy Spirit is working when you're hearing the word preached, when you are believing, when you have faith, um, when you confess the creed. You couldn't say that without the Holy Spirit. So that is really important. Flip over my time thing now. <laughs> All right, so one more. Let's. Um, this is a really. Um, this is a really cool. This is from Psalm fifty-one. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. The Holy Spirit brings us God's presence. Brings us all. The Holy Spirit brings us God's presence. Brings us all that. You know, Jesus has done for us, and the promise that he's with us. That's what the Holy Spirit does. If, if, um, if without the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't have God's presence with us. And the Spirit br brings us joy, salvation, etc., all of that. So, bottom line, going back to where we started, um, we're coming down the home stretch here, um, I start out by saying, how is it that people are made holy? And so now as a Christian, is it your job to make yourself holy? It's actually not. Here's the really cool news. Not only did Jesus do all this stuff for us, died for our sin, you know, defeated death for us, <laughs> you know, all these things he did, but he also, through the Holy Spirit, makes us holy. As a gift. We don't have to win a basketball game. We don't have to knock down a three. We don't have to get the, the great, you know, rebound and make the long outlet pass for a perfect fast break. We don't have to get, we don't even have to know simple math. We don't have to have a garage. We don't have to win or be successful or anything as they talk about it in the world. Yeah. Yay, there you go, Taylor. That's right. That's what it does for us. It makes us really excited. <laughs> <laughs> Aiden, Aiden and uh, Emma will appreciate that. So it, it's a gift. So we are made special. We are made holy 
by the gospel what Jesus did for us, and the Holy Spirit brings that to us. Now, that's a big comfort to know that you count, you matter to God, not because of stuff you do. So you're being made holy is not, you're already made holy. You've got Christ in you. Did, I don't know if Jonathan talked about this in the second article, but, um, you know, the happy exchange is where, you know, if, you know, I came over here and Jesus dying on the cross takes away all of Taylor's yuck and gunk and sin and all the bad stuff. But when he does this, he also gives you all of his righteousness. That's called the happy exchange. That's what God did for us in Jesus. And guess what the Holy Spirit does? The Holy Spirit brings us that gift through the word, that exchange. So now I count, I matter, not because of my wins or losses or my scorecard or, you know, <laughs> golf. Um, uh, not how many bogeys I got or triple bogeys or quads or whatever. Um, that doesn't make me who I am. It might make me upset that I get those, but I, it doesn't make me who I am. It, maybe on the sport, you know that to this day, I can remember we were one game away from state championship in, in high school football. I was a tailback, and we were in a split backfield. And I don't know why, but I'm in my thing here like this, and my leg just went. I, I, I didn't, it wasn't, and I got called for you know, they called it a legal procedure back then, but a false start. And it cost my team kind of any chance of winning the game. We were behind, and we were coming back, though. And, I mean, it was horrible. I still can remember that. That's ridiculous. That's stupid. That's insane. But that's how powerful the way the world thinks you are made holy by your successes. But thanks be to God, I had a foundation that even though all the way the world ways of being special are up and down and up and down and up and down me being made special me being made holy is is you know is a gift of the gospel and you know okay so last thing the other thing that's cool what do you do you think it's a lot of pressure out there to be successful and be super great at everything? In between. I would say in between. In between? Yeah. 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 How many of you want to do the college thing? Physical. Yeah. Part of the... Yeah. Maybe, Taylor. Where are you, Grant? Physically. What? Oh, do you want to go to college? <clears throat> no. No. Okay. I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, so... Yeah. College didn't really help me. Yeah. Right. Right. Yep, no need to spend all that tuition money. Yeah, um, you're going to get out there and start like, entrepreneurial like is, my mom and dad did. Like, there is, like, bad colleges. Like, there are some bad colleges. Like, people do, like, it. And they just take the money, and then they just give you a bad college. <laughs> I, well, see, I actually heard of that. Like, there was a bad there was a lot of college. I forgot the name of it, but it was very terrible, and people were like getting pissed about it because they spent all their half of, near yep. their near their future money. Yep, and then it was all a farce, huh? Yeah, I remember that story. You know, um, I don't think I was under the pressure that you guys are. You know, when it comes to whether it's college or you know a vocational school or heading out on your own business or something. I don't think I was, you know, I think, I don't think it was this group of, but I was talking to, I don't I think they're a little younger than you guys, but it was, no, I guess it would be older. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But another confirmation. And I asked them, what are they most worried about? And this, these are junior high, you know, junior high, seventh, middle school, sorry, seventh, eighth grade, whatever. What do you think they told me? What's, what's your biggest worry? What do you think they said? School. School, okay. That was in there, but it wasn't their biggest one. What do you think? College. College. Money. That was in there. It was money. You know, I never thought about that when I was in junior high. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, we were not rich. In fact, we were like, 
just working class, working class. I, my brother and I were the first ones to go to college, and my dad or my mom's side of the family. So um, my mom's side was farmers. My dad was like workers and, you know, um, kind of blue collar factory stuff. And, and uh, so we were the first ones that went to college, but I never thought about, I never worried about money. <laughs> When I was in junior high, I'm sorry, I just didn't. But, but your peers that were a little older than you when I was teaching confirmation said, yeah, we don't know that we'll be able to afford to have a house or we don't know that we'll be able to afford to have this or that. And I'm like, wow, I never thought about that. In junior high. I mean, I had food on the table. I wanted to play sports every darn thing I can. That's all I cared about. But you, there's a lot of pressure. I feel like you guys are under more pressure than previous generations. Um, so you need more than ever this promise of the third article of the creed that you are made holy by the Holy Spirit through the preaching of the word, through the gospel. Yes, please, Grant. Okay. So I know that paper money is uh, worthless if, if someone says it is. Yeah. Which explains 90% of this, but how is it a single dollar worth less than it was, like, in <laughs> 1920, or even, like, five years ago? Yeah. We need an economist to be here to tell you that. But are you asking, or do you have? What do you think? Or do you have an? I know you're asking, but do you do you have an idea? It's definitely about what's called inflation, right? That's what. So a dollar is not worth what it used to be, but ultimately the worth of a dollar is affected by all kinds of. Um, but it is just paper, and if nobody else thinks it's worth something, then that it's not. But you know, businesses, government, all that you know, weigh in, and uh, I, all I know, Grant, is it could have some from an economic standpoint, and then we'll get to the spiritual part of that. Um, it's there was a time in our country where every dollar was backed by gold. Yeah. So that's a hard commodity. Of course, that is valued differently depending on where things are at but at least there was something of real value that backed the dollar well yeah. when that was severed then congress and the president they could start tinkering you know like printing more money and when you print more money and you spend money you don't have but you can do it because in congress the united states can just say hey we're going to give a billion dollars to ukraine well Sorry, you guys don't have it. Oh, that's okay. We just create it. Well, when you do that, it's maybe as necessary as it was to do that. What does it cause? Cause the value of that dollar to plummet because there's more money. I, I, I'm not an economic expert. Even what about the uh, minimum wage? Look what we did in minimum wage. We raised it up to $15. Hey, guess what? That $15 and now is worth about $10. Because of inflation. It's a proven fact. You raise the minimum wage, you raise inflation. I mean, it was almost the day after that they raised the, the minimum wage that and now, you know, going to the restaurant costs you another 10 bucks. And now, of course, with COVID, of course, we had to spend all this money with COVID relief. Well, what did we do? We just printed money. And when you print money, the dollar of that money, that value of that money goes down. Now, it's way more complex than that. It has to do with interest rates and they take it with it. But so that's the only thing I could say that I know. Now that when they they severed having enough gold to back the dollar, now the dollar's worth has to do with what other countries think about our country and people investing. And anyway, it's very complicated. I'm not a good advisor on that. Yeah. So it was the suffering of backing the dollar up with gold. And it's Looking at uh, the ratios haven't really changed. Mm. Like, uh, in uh, like 
18, 20 to 19, 30, yeah. when Ford first started producing the Model T, yeah. it went from like $500 to 250 but his workers were being paid 25 cents an hour. Right. Which was high at, at the, the time. time. Right. Yep. And it was like three months of pay for a car. Yep. And <laughs> now, it would be now the cheapest car would be like three months of pay. Yeah, that's interesting. A cheap one, yeah. 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 Like the cheapest, newest car. I yeah. Think. Yeah, what would it be? Twenty thousand, maybe twenty-five thousand, which maybe that's a quarter of a year's work for somebody. Eighty thousand. What is the mean? Eighty thousand, seventy thousand, sixty thousand. I don't know, but yeah, that's interesting. Um, but your analogy and your question, like, why is that? Why was that car worth what it was? You had to put certain amount into it, like the the actual metals and. They cost a certain amount. But ultimately, the reason people paid that is because what did they think? They thought it was worth that. That's why they, they won. They could, but then they thought it was worth. So the value of something has to do with what other people think. Here's, here's where I appreciate your question, because I get to finish this session on the Holy Spirit by telling you this. Your value, your holiness, depends on what God says and not what other people think. Yay. How does that sound? Beautiful. Yay. All right. Any other questions about the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit to review enables you to believe, brings Jesus to you. That's the review. It's him. It's him. He's back. Um, so, yeah, just like you guys put together, your value does not depend on what other people say. It depends on what God says. So the Holy Spirit makes you holy, sets you apart. Um, and that's what the Spirit's job is, and that's what's happened for you. And thankfully, unlike the dollar, <laughs> um, your value doesn't go up and down with God Almighty. He, he can stick with you. Okay, any questions about the Sp I, Holy Spirit? Please. I feel like I'm 30% more valuable in Canada, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, probably do, they they value, more do they value Canada? pastors more? <laughs> no, I don't Actually, know about that. Might be, might might be, be, might be a different exchange rate. We'll go up. We'll go online. <laughs> um, all right, you guys. Uh, thank you. This was a great discussion. Um, we're close to two o'clock here. I think close enough to to close us in a prayer. Anything that you guys want prayer for? Any concerns? We got football starting up. We got some breaks. We got end of the year stuff coming, right? <laughs> Tests and all that stuff. None of you guys are taking SAT yet, right? No. 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 AP's done. If you have AP, yeah. nope. <laughs> no victor. <laughs> oh, well, I want to talk some more about your entrepreneur. Uh, oh, so I remember you shared that before. So, all right. Well, let me close this with a prayer. Gracious God, thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit, for making us holy. Um, and as every time we think about the Holy Spirit, may we think about the fact that as you created us and redeemed us, that the Holy Spirit brings all of that to us, making us holy, set apart, special, valued, um, and as a complete gift of yours. So we, we don't have to just, we don't have to do our our holiness. You've taken care of that for us. So um, be with us until we meet again. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Yeah, dear, Can you press uh, stop yeah. on that? I got pulled out talking to Chris.